Now this Fox News alert, North Korea lashes out at the latest UN sanctions, calling the sanctions unanimously passed by the Security Council vicious. That rhetoric just two days after U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Nikki Haley issued this reminder to the world. These are by far the strongest measures ever imposed on North Korea. They give us a much better chance to halt the regime's ability to fuel and finance its nuclear and missile programs. But we all know these steps only work if all nations implement them completely and aggressively. I'm joined now by Gordon Chang, Asia analyst and author of Nuclear Showdown, North Korea Takes on the World. The sanctions were not as tough as the U.S. wanted, but they're, they're tougher than has been in place before, and China actually backed them. Yes, but China has backed the previous eight sets of sanctions. This is number nine, and they're just a marginal increase over number eight, which were adopted on August 5. The real problem with sanctions, John, is that these are half measures, and because of them, you know, we're going to wait to see if China and the rest of the international community enforces them, but we don't have that much time because the North Koreans are within nine months, a year, maybe 15 months of being able to put a nuke on top of a missile that'll be able to reach the American homeland. We don't have very much time to figure this out. You know, 10 years ago, we could deal with half measures in U.S. sanctions, not now. So if these are half measures, what would you propose as full measures that would actually be effective? Well, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, we do need a blockade on North Korea to make sure that North Korea doesn't sell missiles to Iran or chemical weapons to Syria. A full blockade. I think that we need to go that route. And indeed, we have the authority to do it. We don't have the authority in those uh, UN sanctions which were adopted on Monday. But because the North Koreans have abrogated the Korean War armistice at least three times, you know, that means that we can sink North Korean ships. We're not going to do that. But if we have the authority to sink ships, we certainly have the authority to board them and to inspect for weapons. Because the North Koreans have been selling everything they've got in their arsenal to the Iranians and to others. We cannot allow this serial proliferation to continue. And unfortunately, we've been doing that now for two decades. The, the key, you say, is China. But again, China did vote for an increase in sanctions. What leverage do we have against the Chinese? Enormous amounts of leverage. We've got points of leverage. For instance, you know, we biggest Chinese banks have been money laundering for the North Koreans. That's a violation of U.S. law. Treasury Secretary Mnuchin can declare them to be primary money laundering concerns under the Patriot Act. That denies them dollars. Without dollars, that's essentially a death sentence. Also, the other thing is we have a much larger economy than China's 18.6 trillion last year against China's claimed 11.4. Big economies can push small economies around. Also, we're the trade deficit country. We ran a trade deficit with China last year of $309.3 billion. You know, trade deficit countries don't worry about trade wars. The Chinese can huff and puff, but you know, we hold all the cards. It's because of that money that they're getting from us. In, Absolutely. In ex okay. Uh, let's turn our attention to another um, uh, story. The South Korean uh, government, according to a New York Times report, is forming a so-called decapitation unit. That's an apparent tactic aimed at bringing North Korea to the negotiating table. What do you think of that? Yes, and they're not only doing this, they're also talking about it in public. Really what they're trying to do is get some sort of deterrent against the North Korean leader, Kim Jong-un, to say, look, if you actually do something, we're going to kill you. But they don't really need, the South Koreans don't need to talk about this. We just need to increase our capabilities. You know, you would expect every military to be planning to do this. And so this is nothing new. The South Koreans, I think, are just trying to create some publicity. Um, but there are a lot of other things we really need to do in addition to decapitation squads. And the South Koreans need to spend more on their own defense. We'll get into some of those things in our next discussion. Gordon Chang. Gordon, thank you. Thanks, John.